Hey, what's up guys? Spencer Rhodes here. So AMC has released the opening minutes of Fear the Walking Dead Season 5, Episode 4. I believe they have done this with every episode of the season thus far. I guess they just want to try to build hype or maybe they're desperate because it seems like the show's kind of going down on ratings and a lot of people still don't even want to watch it or give it a chance or anything. So they're, they're releasing the opening minutes to try to get some buzz started. But yeah. The opening minutes, it just has, well, if, if you don't want to know about it, stop watching the video because I'm about to start talking about it, and I will put the link to the opening minutes in the description, so if you want to watch that first and then come back to this video, you can do that, you, you can just go ahead and click on the link. Um, but yeah, I'm about to start talking about what's in the opening minutes, so if you don't want to get spoilers, you should pause the video or click away in 3, 2, one. Okay, so it's just Daniel and Skidmark. Those are the characters that we see in the opening minutes. And from the, preview, uh, from the preview, it doesn't look like it's going to just be a Daniel Skidmark episode. I know that Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead have had a history of bottle episodes where it's just episodes where there's only two or three characters in the entire 42-minute runtime. But from the preview, it looks like we're going to be seeing most characters not just Daniel and Skidmark, but the opening minutes, it's its just about Daniel and Skidmark, but that's kind of fair because, for one thing, who doesn't want to see a few minutes in a row of Daniel, you know? <laughs> and for another thing, he wasn't in last episode, so it kind of makes sense that they, you know, he wasn't in last episode, so we get the first few minutes of this episode with just him, so it kind of evens out. But we kind of see some of Daniel's daily routine. We see how Daniel keeps up with the time. He's got some sort of, um, I don't know, sticky note thing where, where with every day, with every new day, he he keeps track of the days and he takes the sticky note off. On the wall, it said October 12th. And then he took that off and it was October 13th. So I guess Daniel Salazar is like legitimately keeping track of the days. So I know that there's some some people that like are really obsessed with the timeline of The Walking Dead and Fear the Walking Dead and, and at what point in time in The Walking Dead is Fear the Walking Dead in right now. So you, you guys are going to have a field day with that. So it, this episode straight up tells you what day it is. So in this episode, it's October 12th and October 13th. And that's kind of cool because that does sort of seem like the type of thing that Daniel Salazar would do, keep track of the time. I mean, that, that seems like the type of thing he, he would do because um, he's, so, he's just so smart and badass like that. But he, um, it seems like uh, he keeps going to people that are now dead and he goes to their, their buildings, their places, their hideouts. I'm not sure how he knows about them. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how they explain that. I don't know if they explain that, but he, he keeps going to these places where there's, there's people that used to live there, but they're dead now, and he takes their items and he brings them to his, his place. I don't know if that's how he's gotten all the stuff that he's gotten, if that's how he's accumulated everything that he's gotten, but... Yeah, I mean, that appears to be what he's doing. He keeps going to other places and getting items, and Skidmark is doing things for him. Um, he's, like, trained Skidmark certain tricks... And it just kind of shows Daniel Salazar's daily routine. I mean, Daniel Salazar is a, a survivor. You know, he, he survives no matter what. He's, he's kind of like a cockroach-like strand, but not really in a cowardly way, just a I survive type of way. Like, he's not really scared or anything or, or you know, selfish. He's just kind of a survivor. He's really, really good at what he does, and a part of what he does is surviving. And we see some of that in these opening minutes. We just see some of, you know, Daniel Salazar living and, and, and surviving. And it, it, he's listening to music, and it, it kind of seems like, I don't know, maybe I think I feel like the opening minutes are trying to tell us that sooner or later Daniel Salazar is going to feel lonely. You know, he, he's living, he's by himself, he's got everything he could want, all the resources that he could possibly want. But other than a cat, he's alone. He's completely alone. And is he just going to live out you know, the rest of his days like this? Is he just going to live the next 30, 40 years, however long he, he has left of his life, alone in this uh, in this complex? Is he is, you know, is that it? Or is he going to sooner or later want to you know do something for someone else? Maybe go out and, and try to help Alicia and Morgan's group like Strand had wanted him to do. Maybe he's going to try to want to help other people. Maybe that's the storyline this season, that Daniel Salazar realizes that, that he doesn't just want to be alone, but he wants to help other people, and he, and he wants to be involved with other people. 
Maybe right now he's just like, fuck that shit. I just want to be by myself. And considering the things he's gone through, especially in season three and season two, I don't blame him. I don't blame him for wanting to be alone, for, for him just wanting to, to hide in, in, this, in this building and, and survive and just be with his cat. But I think that this, I think a part of his story arc in this season, and I could be wrong about this, but I think a part of his story arc in this season is that he's going to realize that he doesn't just want to be alone. He doesn't just want to survive. He wants to help people. He wants to, to be in Morgan's group and try to make a difference. And there's still, after this episode, there's still going to be, what, 12 episodes left? So I think Daniel Salazar could end up getting a lot of character development and realize that he does want to help people and not just be alone. Also, it appears that he's he's he well, he's eating in a part of these opening minutes, and he's taking this like prosthetic thing out of his jaw. So it does seem like he um, like he really did um, have some permanent damage from the gunshot wound to the face. So for those of you that are saying, you know, how did Daniel Salazar just like magically survive getting shot in the face? He doesn't have a scar or anything permanent. Well, for one thing, he does have a scar. I I've seen the scar. I've, I've looked at pictures. Where he got shot, where the bullet exited his cheek, there is a, a pretty, a pretty big, huge, huge, fairly um, big sized scar, and where that's close to where that bullet hole is, he's taking a prosthetic piece out of his jaw, so it looks like that's where a part of his jaw got blown off. So it does seem like they're actually um, being realistic about that, about the the permanent problems of him getting shot. So, yeah, I mean, he does have a pretty legit reason to be pissed off at Strand. <laughs> so, yeah, but, yeah, I thought the opening minutes were cool. You know, I'll take any bit of Daniel Salazar I can get. I love the character. I love Ruben Blades. I'm glad he's getting some episodes and some screen time in this season. Hopefully he lives on and makes it to season six. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't be shy. Hit that like and subscribe. I'm not going anywhere. I make one to two Walking Dead videos per day, so please hit that subscribe button. Right now we are at 552 subscribers. My goal is to try to get to 600 in the next few months. So just remember, every subscriber counts, every bit of support matters, and is very, very appreciated. Hopefully we can get to that goal of 600. Anyway, with all that said, I am Spencer Rhodes, and I will see you guys later. Bye!